Each airport has characteristics that can lead pilots to make errors that result in wrong surface operations, runway incursions, or other surface events. This video will enhance your situational awareness during airport operations by increasing your awareness of these challenges. Let's take a look at issues you might encounter at Aspen Pitkin County Sardi Field Airport from the flight deck. Aspen Pitkin County Sardi Field is a small single runway airport located in the Roaring Fork Valley just two and a half miles northwest of the resort town of Aspen, Colorado. It has associated class delta airspace and is surrounded by rapidly rising terrain from the northeast through the southwest. Aspen is a high altitude airport with a field elevation of almost 8,000 feet. A high density altitude will affect aircraft performance all year round, but especially in the summer. Check your aircraft performance tables before departing. ASE has a diverse traffic mix from light piston powered single engine aircraft to air carrier jets and everything in between. The single runway numbered 1533 has a parallel almost full length taxiway on its east side. All services and facilities are located east of the runway. There are several items that the first time pilot needs to be aware of. Aspen operates in an opposite direction operation configuration 100% of the time due to surrounding mountainous terrain. Most aircraft will land on runway 15 and depart on runway 33. This may create challenges on windy days as tailwind conditions frequently exist. During the busy periods of summer and winter, it is likely that you will come in close proximity to opposite direction air traffic in the vicinity of the airport. And this is a situation that requires the highest level of awareness. Pilots should be vigilant in listening and complying with ATC instructions as soon as practical. The Aspen Air Traffic Control Tower uses tower applied visual separation to maintain safe and efficient operations. Proper compliance and vigilance is essential in preserving the integrity of the operation. It should be noted that runway 1533 is sloped at nearly 2 degrees. Runway 15 landings will be an upsloping grade and runway 33 will land or depart in a downsloping grade. When approaching the runway, be conscious of runway slope illusions as well. The Roaring Fork Valley creates a natural funnel of lower terrain to the northwest. Because of this, the runway 33 departure corridor is located northwest of the airport and the runway 15 arrival corridor is located to the north-northwest aligning with final. Due to terrain and the high volume of both VFR and IFR traffic, this area is frequently congested with air traffic. VFR aircraft are encouraged to contact Aspen Approach 15 miles out on the frequency 123.8. This allows ATC to issue traffic advisories and instructions to avoid conflicts between departing and arriving aircraft. Common VFR entry points to the area are Snowmass Village and the city of Aspen. Snowmass Village is located 3.3 miles west of the airport at the base of a large ski area. The city of Aspen is located 2.5 miles southeast of the airport. When approaching the airport from Snowmass Village, it is important to cross over the top of the airport at midfield at or above pattern altitude, as aircraft will be landing and departing underneath. Pattern altitude for light aircraft is 9,023 feet, and for heavy aircraft, 9,523 feet. For IFR arrivals, the most commonly used approach procedure is the Localizer DME Echo Approach or on good weather days, the visual approach. Due to the opposite direction operations common at the field, aircraft on the visual approach should expect instructions to line up on the final or track the localizer. IFR departures can expect to depart on the LINS departure procedure. Proper execution of these procedures and ATC instructions is critical for the safety of this opposite direction operation and for IFR obstruction clearance. When visual meteorological conditions exist, Aspen ATCT uses a unique procedure that follows the profile of the lens departure. The tower will instruct a runway 33 departure to turn east of the runway 15 final to allow the arrival to pass off their left. The runway departure will then turn westbound above or behind the arrival aircraft. For the departure, active listening and prompt compliance with ATC instructions is imperative. For the arrival, it is critical to remain on the center line unless otherwise approved or instructed by ATC. 
Be aware that some pilots have reported a visual illusion on final for runway 15 that seems to lead them to the right of the runway. At least one jet has mistakenly landed in the grass west of the runway. One mitigation strategy might be to load the localizer DME echo approach as a backup to the visual approach or a GPS user waypoint aligned with the runway. This can help ensure you are lined up for the runway and can help mitigate visual illusions or other confusion on final. If you are unsure of how to accomplish this, refer to the operator's manual for the equipment in your aircraft. In addition, look for reels or the sequenced flashing approach lights to help you identify the runway. After landing, there are several issues that require extra attention. Unless otherwise instructed by ATC, continue past the runway hold bars and join taxiway alpha. If you are unable to do so, inform ATC immediately. You may receive instructions to join the taxiway behind outbound taxiing aircraft. Contact ground control on 121.9 as soon as you have crossed the runway hold short line. The north half of the parallel taxiway is a non-movement area. Aircraft exiting at Alpha 1 through Alpha 3 may encounter aircraft or vehicles that are not under ATC control. Remember, while pilots need to ensure that their aircraft is completely across the hold short line when exiting the runway, if you are unable to do so, inform the tower immediately. The movement area begins just north of Taxiway Alpha 4. When taxiing southbound on Taxiway Alpha, remember, you must have ATC clearance to enter the movement area. Aspen has a run-up de-ice area located a beam Alpha 7 and Alpha 8. Aircraft requiring a run-up should advise ground control on initial contact. The run-up or de-ice area is a non-movement area. While taxiing for departure, you may receive instructions to taxi into this area for staging. This will ensure a clear path for aircraft exiting the runway. When you are ready to continue taxiing to the runway, contact ground control for ATC clearance to re-enter the movement area. There are three hotspots on the airport. Hotspot number one is an area where there is minimal distance between the west edge of the ramp and the runway. The runway hold short lines are located along the edge of Taxiway Alpha, which runs along the edge of the ramp. Do not cross the hold short lines at any spot on the airport without appropriate clearance from the tower. The Taxiway Alpha 2 intersection also directly connects to the runway. Pilots should be aware of this and use caution so as to not inadvertently enter a movement area active runway, or block aircraft from exiting the active runway. Hotspot number two is located at the Alpha 4 intersection. In addition to the short taxi distance from the ramp to the runway, this intersection is a high traffic area for aircraft taxiing out from the north and south GA ramps, holding short of the taxiway Alpha 4 intersection where most arrivals exit the runway. Hotspot number 3 is located on Taxiway Alpha 9 at the approach end of Runway 33. The hold short lines are placed in a manner that does not allow the pilot to see the final for Runway 15. Pilots should use caution in this area and ensure that they have approval to enter the active runway before crossing the hold short lines. Active listening, constant scanning outside the aircraft for pavement markings, above ground signs, and lighting while taxiing will aid in maintaining situational awareness with opposite direction aircraft landing on runway 15. When instructed to line up and wait on runway 33, tower may find it necessary to taxi you off the runway. In this case, you may be instructed to turn left on Taxiway Bravo 8 and hold short of Runway 33 at Bravo 9. Remember, you must continue across the hold short line on Bravo 8 and stop before the hold short on Bravo 9. Don't forget, read back all runway hold short instructions with your call sign. If you are ever in doubt of any control instruction or clearance, please ask the tower to clarify. If you are unfamiliar with the area or a procedure, advise ATC. They are there to help. Being aware of the hotspots and other configuration issues at Aspen will help pilots make better decisions and along with the air traffic control tower, keep the operation safe and efficient. We hope this short video helps you prepare for your trip to the Aspen-Pitkin County Sardi Field. It's always better to know before you go.